for the last, it's been over half a decade, so I had kind of this idea, and, and other people, um, you know, such as Constantine just gave a talk from your community are now looking at uh, these ideas of merging um, some ideas from quantum physics and complexity science. And so we've been coming at this from the quantum physics community, and there's people coming at it from the networks community, and we're sort of developing this common language, and so that's what, kind of what I'm about. So I would like to generally say that complexity science is about understanding complexity, the emergence of phenomenon, the constituents of a system give rise to a global phenomenon, a global effect, okay? A collective effect or a critical effect. Whereas quantum theory, modern quantum theory, is about using complexity. There is a seemingly inherent complexity of the quantum model in which quantum algorithms that are run on futuristic quantum computers will utilize, or that the former makes use of a complex system, okay? That's a quantum computer. It's making use of it where the later complex network theory is studying complexity. And I think that's actually a very fundamental difference, but it's intriguing because it's intriguing because we're both addressing similar issues. Okay, and there's obviously quite a bit of language that is in common already. What are the different types of networks in quantum theory? Okay, the obvious one is you have a graph and there's spins on that graph. Okay, or there's particles on that graph that don't have spin, there's walks, there's this sort of thing. So that's kind of the beginning. Quantum spins range on a graph. And then, of course, you have these quantum circuits and networks. Okay, and this is where it sort of goes outside of the classical realm of physics. You have this idea that you have a conserved number of inputs and outputs for your circuit. The gates that act on those circuits are unitary, okay? But there's a network representation of a quantum process. And if you look this stuff up, you can find a lot about it. It's in several textbooks on this. And, of course, in addition to that, you have another thing which is called quantum circuits which are superconducting quantum electrical circuits, where you could take essentially a classical circuit built out of inductors and capacitors, and you can replace that with quantum components. In addition, you can add nonlinearity with Josephson junctions, and you can create qubits out of that and other devices. It's, it's actually uh, it's an interesting thing. It's been going on for a while. And so the other area of interest is tensor network states. This is actually a very fascinating area, and there's already some use in network theory of this type of idea. So in tensor network states, you have this graphical language, which is a formal language, actually, if you really do it sophisticatedly enough. And you're able to represent these tensors, these networks, it's just linear maps, okay? And there's a whole ton of stuff in quantum theory where they've been working on this for ages. They're using this as a succinct way to represent quantum states. And they're looking at various different properties. It's been going on for a long time. Now, on the other hand, in the network theory side, you start to use ideas like principal component analysis, different ways to factor things, okay, looking at different time slices. Multiplex networks are a special case of tensor networks. And you'll notice that there's recently been some theories of multiplex networks where they cast this into a tensor framework, okay. The graphical language for those has been well developed in quantum theory, and it's an area where there's a nice, nice bridge that can be built right there. So this is definitely something to look at. Um, I've written about a dozen papers on that, not merging it with, um, you know, with complex networks, but just to use this as a tool for, for uh, you know, for simulation, for algorithms, to prove things about quantum states. And then you have this idea that you can, you know, you could take a quantum probability distribution and you can evolve a state, you can grow a network with some quantum probabilities. It's not super interesting, but you can obviously do that too. Um, so. Quantum versus stochastic walks on complex network topologies. These are the different areas that people have kind of explored when they're looking to kind of merge these two things. Um, tensor networks versus multiplex networks I've already mentioned. Um, quantum versions of community detection. So that's an interesting one, okay? You can, what happens if you have, let's say, a biological process that has some quantum coherence in it? Can you, can you apply your community detection algorithms to find out where those particles are localized and why? Okay, and this is something that we worked on. It's kind of it's a good it's a good fun. I personally decided I don't want to ever work on community detection again because the best thing you're going to do is an axiomatic framework. It's never going to be well defined what a community is, but I tried it. And entropic measures on networks. This is an area that is you know this is the entropy and information theory is the language of quantum physics and modern quantum physics. So looking at what's going on now in network theory, there's a lot of different ideas about using information theory and different measures. And this is something that's been explored to death in quantum physics, albeit in a, with a different motivations. So there's a lot of different things that we can look at 
from the quantum literature and back and forth and sort of merge those together. And I believe this is happening right now, and I believe it'll happen more in the future. Um, growing networks, already mentioned, this is interesting. You can grow networks with different statistics. It's arguable, though, if it's really quantum, if you're already using like a mean field approach and you're saying that it models a classical system. So what is quantum is another question that we can, we can kind of discuss later. These are subtle questions. This is not, you know, what is quantum physics? It's, a, it's another question. If you, if you can, if you say, okay, I take a BEC, I do a mean field, okay, and I'm gonna model something that's completely classical with this, then you don't even need, you don't even need quantum theory then. So it's kind of an interesting question. But growing networks that become increasingly more quantum mechanical is actually an interesting thing, okay? And this is an area that I think is definitely worthy of further explanation. Controlling processes on networks. This is an area where quantum physics has been, you know, they have, a, they kind of reinvented classical control theory. They made it apply to quantum systems. They've taken and just done a host of different results, many of which are based on algebra and different properties of physical systems. And in addition, we've, and what I'm gonna be talking about today if I ever get to it, and you have to cut me off at 25 minutes because it's gonna, this will go on all day. So putting a process on a network and breaking symmetry as a means to control it, and the symmetry that we're gonna break is time reversal symmetry. It sounds more fancy than it is. You can get a hold of this stuff in a reasonably short period of time. But breaking the symmetry has a subtle interplay with the global topology of this network as we'll see. And you can't actually break that symmetry if your network um, does not have an odd length cycle. And we've, we've kind of proven this and kind of classified it. And it's not kind of a free lunch. We get some control, but it's probabilistic control. So it's kind of a, it's an interesting area. And control of different kind is one, one thing. Now, the Ising model is a computational resource. So back when you were learning about condensation and phase transitions and all that stuff, we were learning about how to program an Ising model and how to anneal it using adiabatic um, quantum computing and thermal annealing with quantum effects. So we were doing kind of the same thing but we were studying it very differently. We were looking at al algorithmic phase transitions and these different types of things. It's different communities that have something in common. I think the Izzy model is a good bridge. It might not lead to anything very new, but it's, it gives a common, kind of a common language. <coughs> and then quantum algorithms to uh, calculate network properties, as Constantine just said, this is obviously an area where there's big overlap, okay, between these topics. And so 